God says, the earth is mine and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. So the whole concept is, is to train up your children and discipline them so when they come to the place of age, there's nothing that they can't do. The mercy of God is released every time in the Bible when people are fasting. We become a team. We become a body of believers. If you get a breakthrough, she gets a breakthrough. I'll loose the gifts of healing where no cancerous cells shall ever be in my body. I loose the gifts of healing that drive out diabetes and any, any foreign sickness. Give the Lord a big praise clap. 
Come on, let's join in with them here this morning. Let's bless the Lord. Amen. Come on, is there a praise in you this morning? Come on, is there a shout in you this morning? Come on, has God been good to you? Come on, can you bless his holy name this morning? Amen. He's worthy of glory and honor and praise. Hallelujah. Come on, he's the great king over all the earth. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want us right now, as we just begin to go ahead and pray, I want us just begin to stretch our hands out towards our city. You know, there's been upheaval all across our nation. There's been violence. There's been looting and all types of criminal activities and manifestations of just the enemy. But we're believing that that's not going to happen here in our city. Now, Father, in Jesus' name, we intercede for the city of Louisville today. And Lord, we cry out unto you and we declare, Lord God, Lord, the blood of Jesus over our city. And Lord, we want to thank you, Father God, that as we begin to pray, God, that you're moving by your spirit, Lord God, upon the hearts of the inhabitants of our city. And Lord, today we pray, Lord, against those spirits of darkness, they would try to stir up, Lord, racism. They would try to stir up, Lord, hatred and malice, Lord, and destruction and devastation. We rebuke you. We bind you. We render you helpless and powerless. You're not going to do that to our city in Jesus' mighty name. But God, we diffuse that situation and we declare the peace and the presence of Almighty God in this city. And Lord, we pray and open heaven over Louisville. I declare hearts are being opened. Blinders are being removed. Lord, there's a stirring of your spirit. Our city's blessed in the name of the Lord. Our city is a city of righteousness in Jesus' mighty name. Now, Lord, we pray for our nation today. And Lord, we declare that our nation is a nation of righteousness. And devil, we cancel your assignment to bring division and conflict into America. We declare in the name of the Lord that the Spirit of God shall break forth from the north to the south, from the east to the west. I pray every city would be alive with the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, I declare in Jesus' mighty name, you're moving upon the heart of our president. Lord, we bless Barack Obama. May he stand for what you stand for. May he oppose what you oppose. I pray, God, that you would be with the Congress and the Senate, those that serve, Lord God, in the Supreme Court, the appellate courts. Lord, that you would move upon our elected officials. And I pray the fear of God would fall upon them. The convicting power of the Holy Spirit would rest upon them. And, Lord, I declare righteousness in the leadership of our nation. Lord, we bless the United States of America today. In Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' name. I want you to begin to lift up the members of your family today, Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, we begin to bless our families here today. Lord, I bless Kim and Josh and Matthew and Megan. And Lord, I declare today your hand is upon our families. And devil, we command you to take your hand off in Jesus' mighty name. I declare our families belong to God. We plead the blood over them. We declare, devil, you're not going to divide and separate and pull apart. You're not going to have any stronghold in our family. In Jesus' name, I loose the love of God, the peace of God, the serenity of God in your home. In Jesus' mighty name, for the glory of God. Now raise your hand to the Lord. And I want you to pray this with me. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, I declare your will shall be done in my life and every member of my family. I declare in Jesus' name, there's an anointing upon me and my family to be in the right place, doing the right thing all the days of our life. I declare today, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord all the days of our life. I declare the blessing of the Lord is resting upon my family. I declare we are blessed of God. I declare the goodness of God and the mercy of God is resting upon my home. There shall be no evil. There shall be no harm. There shall be no destruction that's coming near my home. 
because God's given his angels charge over me and my family and I declare we're abiding under the shadow of the Almighty in Jesus mighty name do you believe that today come on let's give God a big praise clap amen hallelujah hallelujah praise the name of the Lord I want you to stretch your hands out toward Pastor Bob and Pastor Margaret now father in Jesus name Lord, we bless Pastor Bob and Pastor Margaret. And Lord, I declare upon them right now, Lord, a strengthening, a rejuvenation, a revitalization that's coming upon them in the name of the Lord. I declare, God, that you're touching them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Lord, I declare they're going to run and not be weary. They're going to walk and not faint. God, I declare you're releasing wisdom and knowledge and understanding and insight and revelation that's flowing under them for the glory of God. Lord, I want to thank you, Father God. You're giving them increased vision. Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, concerning your plan, your purpose, and your will, I declare their families blessed all the days of their life. Lord, I declare that 2015 shall be the greatest year that they've ever had. Lord, I want to thank you, Father God, for the greatest and mightiest breakthroughs and miracles, Lord, they've ever experienced before. It's set in motion. It's on its way. We lift them up in prayer. We stand with them in faith. And we're expecting, Lord God, Lord, an explosion of your spirit to break forth in a mighty way. Come on, let's give God one more big praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, you may be seated in God's presence. I'm going to ask our ushers to come at this time. If they'll just begin to pass out the communion. We want to encourage you today to participate in the communion with us. Our communion is an open communion. You don't have to be a part of this church, but you do need to be a part of the church. And so at this time, I'm going to ask Pastor Chad to come and to see ministers at the communion with us. Well, let's give the Lord another good hand clap of praise for the presence of the Holy Spirit that has been here today. How many of you have felt his presence in a big way? Well, he's just getting started, amen? You can leave this place different than you came in Jesus' name. I want to read a brief passage of Scripture out of the book of John, chapter number 6. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me has everlasting life. That is the gospel news right there. If we'll believe on him, will have everlasting life. Then Jesus made this bold declaration and he said, I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and they're dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. Praise God. I am the living bread, Jesus said which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. I'm so glad that Jesus pointed back to how God provided for God's church in the wilderness all those years. They wanted for nothing. They lacked for nothing. Bread fell down from the sky every day for them. Their shoes never wore out. Their clothes never wore out. God provided for their every need and proved himself to be that El Shaddai, the God of more than enough. Amen? But Jesus said if they ate of that bread from heaven and eventually died, you can expect to eat from this bread of heaven. And I make the promise, Jesus said, you shall never die. I'm thankful today to know that when we partake of the body and the blood of the Lord, having discerned him in our hearts, having received him as Savior and Lord, it's good to know that that which is within us, that spirit man, will never pass away, but will have eternal life forever with him in glory. Somebody say amen. How many of you are glad for that today? Praise God. So today we come to partake of these communion elements. 
celebrating what Jesus did. He said, as often as you do this, you remember my work on the cross. You remember how I suffered and shed my blood. You remember every punch and every smack and every lash of the whip that I took upon my back. You remember all of my suffering. And I'm thankful today that he suffered so we didn't have to. That he bled and died so we didn't have to. And as long as we partake of him, brother, I'll have some communion too. Praise God. That's all right. That's all right. I'm thankful that as long as we partake of the bread of life, somebody shout the name of that bread of life. Come on, shout it one more time. We like to do it in Trinity around here. Shout it one more time. Jesus, today, Lord, we thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for your body that was broken for us. We thank you, Lord, for your blood spilled and shed for us. We thank you, Lord, that you're the bread of life. We thank you for eternal life. Lord, we thank you that when you left earth, you've gone to prepare a home for us, that where you are, we may be also. We celebrate you in this Christmas season. We set aside this time to honor you in the, in the birth that you uh, came into the earth with. We just thank you that you were born. You were born with purpose, and that purpose was to buy us back, to purchase us, and put us in right standing with our Father. We honor you and we remember you today in your name. Amen. Let's eat of the body together. And drink of the cup. And somebody shout hallelujah. Give God a great big shout of praise. Join the Congregation of Evangel for the annual church-wide Christmas party, December 21st at 5 p.m. at the 6900 Billtown Road location. This night will include a presentation from the children's ministry, special music from the choir, and more. Then afterwards, we'll have a Christmas cookie reception. So bring a dozen of your favorite cookies to share. Join pastors Bob and Margaret Rogers for Christmas at the Corner of Hope Church. Thursday, December 18th at 7 p.m. This traditional Christmas service will take place in one of Louisville's historic cathedrals and will include a message of hope from Pastor Rogers and the playing of one of Louisville's oldest still operating pipe organs. Join us for this night of celebration at the Corner of Hope Church, Thursday night, December 18th at 7 p.m. Make plans this Christmas Eve to join Pastor Bob and Margaret Rogers for Beyond Bethlehem Star, a Christmas Eve service featuring a living nativity, original music, and more. Plus, go with us live via satellite to Bethlehem for the Christmas Day celebrations happening there. It starts Christmas Eve night at 6 p.m. at the 6900 Billtown Road location. And for more information, visit worldprayercenter.org. This Christmas, discover what happens when two friends go back in time to try and find the lost Christmas story. Join Pastor Bob Rogers for this three-week illustrated sermon, Sundays at 9 and 11 a.m. at the 6900 Billtown Road location. Last Sunday, uh, after the, the service was uh, concluded, I left for Israel. And we have a television station over in Bethlehem. And after the war uh, was over, there was just a lot of confusion. And they uh, had gotten a lot of my, our pictures of our services on YouTube, where we had had nights to honor Israel and nights to stand with Israel. And when they saw all of that, they proclaimed that uh, we were spies for the Israeli government. And so they, uh, we had to go and work all of that out, and God was with us. And where we, now, where we had 49% ownership of that station, God is now giving us 100% ownership of that station. And I praise God for that. <clears throat> 
Uh, war is, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> war is a terrible thing. And in Palestine, uh, or in Gaza, it'll take almost uh, 20 years to rebuild the destruction that happened during that war. You have over uh, half a million people that are actually just living on the streets. They're living in tents. It's terrible. There are many of the Israeli soldiers that are having to get counseling, uh, going through some of these tunnels. Uh, little children, some of them four and five years old, came running towards the soldiers, and they were strapped with explosives that uh, they either had to decide to either kill the child or if the child uh, reached them, those explosives would be detonated by the Hamas. And so when they shot these children, it created all kind of psychological problems. The same, they would send old people, and they had to shoot some of these old people or actually be blown up. And so there's a lot of terrible things, and uh, we just need to pray continually for the peace in that part of the world. Amen? But God, uh, God was with us, and God uh, has, uh, is protecting us, and God's helping us. That, uh, that uh, station is the number one station in all of Palestine. And it reaches into Amman, Jordan. It reaches all over into Israel. And um, out of 34 stations, it's the number one station. And we give God the glory for that. Let's give the Lord a great big praise clap. Hallelujah. <clears throat> We've been able to broadcast 60 hours a week of the gospel on the air. And the rest is sports and um, family-type programming. But now we're going to be able to bump that up to over 100 hours a week. And I thank God for that. And so you pray that God will help us to work this out. I have to come up with some more money. And God's going to enable us to do that too for the glory of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I want the ushers to bring me a couple of those offering buckets. One set on this side and one on the other side. Today, if you have a special prayer need... I want you to write it on a piece of paper, and I want you to write it this way. I want you to write a name and what to, to pray about. I have a name here of a lady in our church, and uh, I've written her name, and underneath that, I've written cancer. And she's believing for a miracle. And what I want you to do, if you have a, a particular need, I want you to, when you come, we have our Seed Faith March, I want you to drop that need into one of these containers. And then I want you to reach in that container and I want you to pull out another need. And this week, I want you to pray for that need that you have every single day. I want you to pray and ask God for a miracle to happen to them. When you pray for other people, God makes miracles happen for you. And so I don't want you to just drop in a prayer need and not get a prayer need out that you can pray. If you want somebody to pray for you, start praying for somebody else. Amen? Also, I have some prayer cloths. These are red prayer cloths, and this symbolics the blood of Jesus. And this is a reminder that God's going to save all your family. That's God's going to save your sons and your daughters. God's going to save your grandchildren. And I want you to get one of these prayer cloths. We're going to have them all up here at the front. So when you bring your seed faith gift today, uh, get a prayer cloth. You may want to get several of these prayer cloths. I've often told the story about how a lady, she got one of these prayer cloths and her son was on drugs. So she took the, the sole out of, the, of his shoe, the tennis shoe, and put the prayer cloth underneath the sole of his tennis shoe. He didn't know it was there. Well, he loaned his tennis shoes out to his drug buddy. And you know where I'm going. His drug buddy got saved. And uh, this fellow went to his mother and he said, you know, he used to be my best friend. Now all he wants to do is talk about Jesus. But it wasn't long that he got saved too. And so I really believe in these prayer cloths for the glory of God. And I want you to pick one of these up. Well, today... It's offering time. Let's give the Lord a great big praise clap. Hallelujah. I want you to stand with me. 
I want us to declare this proclamation of faith. Lord Jesus, I come into your house, not empty-handed, but bringing my tithes and offerings according to Malachi 3.10. The windows of heaven are open to me. Blessings are being poured out that I cannot contain. The devourers rebuke for my sake. This year is a continuation of the Jubilee blessings. By faith, I have a better job. Promotions, raises, bonuses and benefits, business opportunities, sales and commission increases, inheritances, rebates, settlements and checks in the mail. I expect favor, interest, royalties and scholarships, gifts, surprises and newfound monies. I'm using wisdom and self-control in my spending. My bills are decreasing and my income is increasing. I have the anointing for blessings, equipping me to be a giver for the kingdom of God. All my needs are met and there is no lack. I have power to create wealth, the favor of God's upon me, and everything I put my hand to will prosper. I'm a cheerful giver, sowing in good ground that's bringing souls into the kingdom of God, and my God is supplying all my needs. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hold your offering high to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray today would be a special day. Not only as we bring our tithes and our offerings, Lord, we're bringing a seed that's going to bring miracles into our lives. I rebuke the devil off of your life. I rebuke Satan off your family, off of your finances, off of your health. And Lord, as we give to you, may it open the windows of heaven for the glory of God. And everyone said, Amen. And you may be seated. God bless you. time ever, the history of the Jewish people will come alive in the all-new Spirit of Israel King James Version Bible. See never-before-seen pictures from the Holy Land, specifically commissioned for this Bible. Plus, read the history of the Jewish people in a more in-depth and easy-to-understand way than ever before. Our team of experts worked for over two years to put this Bible together, traveling back to the land of the Jewish people, the land of Israel, so that nothing would be left out. Now you can benefit from their study and knowledge with this once-in-a-lifetime Bible. Never before has a Bible been commissioned with the original King James Scriptures, both Old and New Testaments, and included over 200 extra pages of pictures and the history of the Jewish people. Don't waste another minute. Order now, and you can have your copy in time for Christmas to give to your family or as a gift to someone you know. This offer is limited, so you must call now. 1-866-965-7226 receive the spirit of israel king james version bible in beautiful gray italian leather with over 200 pages of the history of the jewish people and more or visit spirit of to find out more about this exclusive bible offer and to see more pictures from the bible call or go online now from their persecution to the triumph of their accomplishments the bible tells the spirit of a people searching for their place in the earth and their struggle to become a nation and to serve the one true god and now for the first time ever, their spirit has been captured both in words and in a pictorial history in the all-new Spirit of Israel Bible. This King James Bible is the whole Word of God, but also includes over 200 pages of facts, pictures, and stories of the Jewish people's spirit. Relive the triumphs and examine the struggles that created the spirit of this now strong nation. It's all here and available for the first time to you. Operators are standing by. Call now. 1-866-965-7226 Use any major credit or debit card when calling. They say that the story of Jesus is old and they ask us to preach something new. The story of the manger through the man on the cross for the wise of this world will not do. But it can never grow old. It can never grow old even though told a thousand times more. While death lives unvanquished and evil rules the world, the story of Jesus will never grow old. The story of Christmas is perhaps the most powerful and beautiful story because it's the birth of our Savior and Jesus was born of a virgin. He was born to bring reconciliation between mankind 
and God. And that was a story. It was a supernatural story. It's a miraculous story that could have never taken place without the power of the Holy Spirit. And so when you enter into the Christmas time, you enter into a time of great miracles. There are over 300 prophecies that were given in the Old Testament about Jesus himself. It was prophesied that he would be born of a virgin, that he would be born in Bethlehem, that he would flee to Egypt, that he would be persecuted, that he would be crucified, that no bones in his body would be broken. To give you an idea of what we're talking about, if just eight of these prophecies were fulfilled by one man, it is a mathematical equation of one and one quintillion. Now that's a number that has a one with 18 zeros behind it. If there were 48 of these prophecies fulfilled by just one person, it would be a one with 157 zeros behind it. But to have all 300 of those prophecies fulfilled, it is just, well, the only thing you could say, it's just Jesus. It's impossible except God fulfilled it in the name of the Lord. And he fulfilled it for us. And the reason there had to be a virgin birth, a reason that the Holy Spirit hovered over a young girl, probably... Uh, from 14 to 16 years of age and placed within her the seed of God. The reason it had to happen this way is because the bloodline which comes from the male had to come from heaven. It was an unpolluted un, uh, bloodline that did not have the stain of sin, that not, did not have the, same, the stain of failure, but it had the DNA of God. And I want to share just for a moment about what took place on that uh, time when Jesus was born in Bethlehem because Joseph and Mary had no reason to even go to Bethlehem. But yet it was prophesied that, she, uh, that Jesus would be born in this little town of Bethlehem. They lived almost a three-day journey away. She was pregnant. And there came this worldwide taxation law from Caesar Augustus. And every person had to return to the city of their fathers. And since Joseph was from the house of David, he had to go to Bethlehem. And when they arrived there at Bethlehem, it was evening. All the hotels were filled up. And she was getting ready to give birth. And the only place they could find was in the stables. And he was born in a manger. Jesus was not born to the rich. He was not born with a silver spoon in his mouth because people could have said, well, Christianity is a religion for the rich. But he was born to a very humble family. And he was embraced of all mankind. The shepherds came. The kings from the east came, came and they brought special gifts. But he was surrounded by angels and protected by divine beings. And then when they received information, they, an angel came to Joseph in a dream that there was a plot to kill all the male children in Bethlehem. And so being warned in a dream, he fled even before daylight came. And he went to Egypt, thus fulfilling the prophetic word that he would journey in the land of Egypt. So God sent his angels even to protect Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. I read the story of a, a man by the name of Roland Buck. The fact is Roland Buck's daughter and grandchild came and visited here at our church. But Roland Buck pastored a, a church in Boise, Idaho, and one uh, Saturday night at 3 o'clock in the morning, this uh, very strong arm reached and touched him in the bed. He was awakened and it was an angel. 
And this angel took him down to their kitchen table and he began to talk with him. He eventually would take him into the throne room of God and there 120 happenings were showed to him. He was not allowed to speak these to any person. And one of those, he saw a man would come and get saved in his church. He said, I, I can remember when that man did come. It was this man I had seen when I was in the throne room of heaven. And God had also shown me that within just a few days, uh, a few months actually, he would die. I even had the very date he would die in an airplane crash. He said, I prayed with him at the altar, knowing that I could not tell him what would lie ahead. He said he saw a couple when he was in the throne room that on a specific day, they would come and he would counsel them with marital, they had marital problems. And so it came to that day. He said, I woke up and he said, I knew that this was the day I had a divine appointment with this couple for counseling. But yet no calls came and now it came to the end of the office and he would do a lot of marital counseling in that city. And he told the secretaries, well, you all go on home and I'll lock up. And after about 15 minutes, after everyone had left, the phone rang. And on the other end of that phone was a, a man who said they had driven. He and his wife had driven for 300 miles and come to Boise to spend the weekend they were having marital problems, and when they came into the hotel, the phone book was open on the desk, and there was an a, uh, advertisement there of the church, and it said that they do marital counseling. Well, Roland Buck said, I knew that God had prepared the way, that God had had that phone book open just so they could see it. So I told them I would wait for them, and they drove over to the church and we sat down in our in the office and and the man said you know I don't know why we're even here uh, we came to try to sort things out we drove here to Boise and then we saw that advertisement and but I think we've got everything worked out I really don't think we even need to have any counseling and Roland Buck says well uh, did uh, you also know that your wife has a 38 revolver in her purse and she's planning to kill you and murder you tonight did you know also know that he looked over at his wife and she began to tear up and he opened her purse and there was a 38 revolver and he was able to counsel them and lead them to Christ he said that this angel gave him a wafer it was about five inches uh, square and about five h of an inch thick and he ate it he ate it it was sweet like honey it reminded him how the angel gave Elijah uh, something to eat in the wilderness he said he had gained a little extra weight he said the first day he lost five pounds the second day he lost another five pounds and then he began to lose a pound a day until he had lost 25 pounds. I wish I could have one of those wafers and uh, I could sell them. I'd get very, very rich. But angels are real. And the angel came and protected Christ. The Bible says that when Jesus was born, the angels came and announced the birth of Christ. These weren't these choir boy angels. These weren't little curly-headed angels that weighed 95 pounds. But these were the Green Beret. These were the special forces of heaven. And they came and they sealed off the city of Jerusalem. And when people would go into the city of Jerusalem, it would be like going through a mist that the demons and the evil uh, on the outside could not penetrate. It was a no-fly zone for the devil. And they surrounded Jesus Christ and he was protected. That's what angels do today when they are sent to protect us. They surround us and evil cannot penetrate the darkness. But 
the reason that Jesus had to be born of a virgin, of the Virgin Mary, was for primarily two reasons. Number one, the bloodline uh, contains your DNA. It contains the, the molecules that make up your personality, that make up your life, that make up your, your, the direction you're going to go. We are told through great studies in this that a, a, a child who could be totally separated from its father and have no contact with his father, and his father would be uh, a very astute in business, that same child, even though he's never met his father, will have the same characteristics and can be very astute in business also. We are, are told through studies at the highest level that if there is a, an alcohol problem or an anger problem, that that can actually be passed, that curse, through the DNA. The Bible tells us that the curse of the fathers can go on the sons unto the fourth generation. And so a person is affected 95% by their DNA and only 5% by their environment. And so what has to happen is God has to change your DNA. Amen. And he does it through the blood of Jesus. And when a person gets born again, I believe God changes the, the bloodline in you. And no longer are you ruled by the bloodline of a rebellious a creature of God that will not follow the ways of the Lord, but you become under the authority of the Holy Spirit. And God takes out the hatred, and God takes out the strife, and God takes out the sin that taints people's lives, and he changes everything. <laughs> Hallelujah to the Lord. I had a, a lady in my church, and she told me about her mother. Her mother's name was Ruby. They were born and, and raised down in Warren County, down close to, to Bowling Green, Kentucky. Her mother was a hardworking lady. She worked as a waitress, and her, her dad was an alcoholic. She said that her dad came in, and he was drinking. And when he began to drink, he got mean. And Mama, she was ironing her dress, getting ready to go to work, and they got into it. She said she was in the other room, and she began to hear her mother say, now, now put that gun away. Now, now put that gun up. Somebody could get hurt. And then she heard her mother bolt for the door. And then her dad follow after her mother. And while... He uh, stood on the porch, and she was running. He, she, he began to shoot at uh, her mother. She said, I knew that mother had been killed. She had fled in her slip and barefooted. But thank God, Daddy missed, and he didn't hit her. She, uh, she was able to get to a neighbor's house. And they gave her a little bit of money and gave her some clothing and she caught a, a bus and she went to Chicago and there she got a job. She said, during those times that mother was gone, she said, it was the worst time of my life. All my dad would do is drink. Said, our house became so filthy and so dirty. Said, I didn't want to go to school and me and my brother would just, just lay in bed and we would cry at night. And then finally, after one month, said the door opened one, one uh, uh, evening, and in walked Mama. And Mama said, uh, kids, get your stuff together. We're getting out of here. I've got us an apartment. Get your stuff packed. Get your clothes and put them in this paper sack. We're leaving here. We're getting out of here. And as we begin to hug on Mama, we begin to run to get our, our clothes together. Daddy, he sat over the table and he began to cry. And he said, Ruby, Ruby, don't leave me. He said, Ruby, you, you all, you're all I got. Ruby, forgive me. Give me another chance. Ruby, I promise you that I'll, I won't drink anymore. 
Ruby, please, please don't leave me. And it so touched Mama that she finally turned and she, she said, all right. She said, but let's get this place cleaned up. This place is filthy. And he began to jump up and try to begin to get the place and cleaned up. And they began to go to church. They went to a little Pentecostal church right outside of Bowling Green. And the whole family got saved. She said, my dad quit drinking. Said, God really saved my family in the name of the Lord. What does the blood of Jesus do? It changes your DNA. It takes the bad off of you and puts the good on you in the name of Jesus. It changes who you are. Hallelujah. That could have never happened if it hadn't been for the virgin birth of Christ. Because Jesus contained the blood of his heavenly father, not the blood of an of a earthly being. There was a, a, a boy who was taking a shower after PE class. While he was taking a shower there, some of the other kids looked and they saw these terrible scars on his body. So where did you get those scars? He said, I was attacked by an alligator. And the alligator began to drag me into the pond and, and uh, my mother came out and she, she got a hold of me. And he said, well, I bet every time you see those scars, it brings back bad memories. He said, no, every time I see those scars, it brings back good memories because my mama wouldn't let go and I know she loves me. It is the love of God where Jesus will not let go of our lives. And so when we talk about Christmas, come on, let's give the Lord a great big praise clap. Hallelujah. So when we talk about Christmas, it's more than just giving gifts, but it's an understanding that because of Christmas, because of the birth of Christ, we have the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. When a person will embrace that, when they will accept that, then it brings a grace and a glory upon their life. You know, in the old covenant, people could not be born again. They could be saved from destruction, but they still had that old DNA. They still had that, that old sinful nature. And that was not broken until, until Jesus came to this earth. But in the old covenant, once a year, the high priest would enter into the holies of holies. And there was the Ark of the Covenant, and in that Ark of the Covenant, there were the commandments, the Ten Commandments. It basically was a judgment. And anybody who looked upon those uh, commandments, those laws, they were found guilty. And God punished them by death. The wages of sin is death. And so to keep man from being judged, there was placed upon that uh, Ark of the Covenant a lid. And that lid was called the mercy seat. And so the high priest would come once a year into the holies of holies and he would take the blood of a sheep and he would pour it upon the mercy seat and it became a substitute, a substitute for our sins. Somebody had to die and it was a sheep that died and not us who died. Well, the Bible says in the New Testament that Jesus became the propitiation of our sin. Say that word with me. He became the propitiation of our sins. Now, that's one of those 50 cent theological words that it takes a dictionary to find out even what it means. But it means simply he became our mercy seat. He became the covering. He became cursed so we could be blessed. He that knew no sin became sin for me that I might have the righteousness of God in Christ. Though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, that through his poverty we might be made rich. By his stripes we were healed. He took the curse of cancer, so we don't have to have cancer. He took the defeat upon his life, so we could have the victory on our lives in the name of Jesus. 
The Bible said it is written, everyone that is, is uh, hanged on a tree uh, shall be cursed. And he became hanged on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us. And so today, Jesus became cursed so we could be blessed in Jesus' name. And that blood of Jesus, it brings favor and grace upon our lives. Through the blood of Jesus, it opens a door. It's a door that cannot be opened except through the blood of Christ. And when you go through that door of salvation, there's a grace and peace that comes upon you. You become marked by the power of the Holy Spirit. Across the river in New Albany, there used to be a place called the Big Wheel. It was a root beer stand, and later it became a truck stop. But it is the story base of a lady whose husband left her. She had six kids from ages three months to seven years of age. He walked out on her, and really, the kids didn't even miss him because he had abused them. He had gone through alcoholic rages, and finally, when he left, it was a relief to them all. She didn't have anything left. She had less than a dollar bill and an old car with four bald tires. And so she thought to herself, I'm going to have to get me a job and support my family. So she laid, loaded all those kids in the car, and she began to go from one place to another. She went to Coldgate when that was open. She went to other places of business, and there was no work to be found. But then on her way home, she stopped by that truck stop. A woman by the name of Granny now ran that truck stop, and she went in and she hired her. She hired her on the midnight shift. The pay was 65 cents an hour and tip money. So she rushed home with the kid. She found a neighbor, teenager, to come over there and spend the night with her kids, and she was paying her a little more than a, a dollar a night, and she went to work. She said it was tough. It was tough, and she would pray and ask God's peace and God's help. And uh, she said, many times my tires were so bad I had to pump them up even to get to work. She said, I came out one morning after working all night, wondering what I'm going to do if I was going to have a flat tire or not. And I looked, and in the back seat of my car were four brand new tires. Somebody had bought her tires. She said, I, I didn't know exactly how I was going to get them changed, so she went by a service station, and she made a deal with the owner. If he would put those tires on her car, she would clean up his office in that service station. She said he got the better end of the deal. It was so filthy and so dirty. But God met every need. God helped her. God helped her to raise those kids. She said it came to Christmas time. She said, I really didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't have the money to buy clothes for them, to buy toys. And I found some broken toys, and I tried to repair them. And at night, I, I began to paint them when, when the kids weren't around. And, and I was going to do the best I could for Christmas. And I worked all night on Christmas Eve. When I came out to get into the car to go home and to celebrate our Christmas with the family, said my car was filled with food. It was filled with groceries. There was a ham. Somebody had put a ham in there. And then I looked and there was clothes. There were five pairs of jeans and all different sizes. And there was a little dress for my girl. There was toys, there was a doll, there were trucks, there were balls. She says, I look back, she said, I see how God gave me grace and gave me favor and somehow I made it. Four of her six kids uh, went to college and got a college education. God helped her and it was through the power of the blood of Jesus.
For the first time ever, the history of the Jewish people will come alive in the all-new Spirit of Israel King James Version Bible. See never-before-seen pictures from the Holy Land, specifically commissioned for this Bible. Plus, read the history of the Jewish people in a more in-depth and easy-to-understand way than ever before. Our team of experts worked for over two years to put this Bible together, traveling back to the land of the Jewish people, the land of Israel, so that nothing would be left out. Now you can benefit from their study and knowledge with this once-in-a-lifetime Bible. Never before has a Bible been commissioned with the original King James Scriptures, both Old and New Testaments, and included over 200 extra pages of pictures and the history of the Jewish people. Don't waste another minute. Order now, and you can have your copy in time for Christmas to give to your family or as a gift to someone you know. This offer is limited, so you must call now. 1-866-965-7226 Receive the Spirit of Israel King James Version Bible in beautiful gray Italian leather with over 200 pages of the history of the Jewish people and more. Or visit spiritofisraelbible.com to find out more about this exclusive Bible offer and to see more pictures from the Bible. Call or go online now. From their persecution to the triumph of their accomplishments, the Bible tells the spirit of a people searching for their place in the earth and their struggle to become a nation and to serve the one true God. And now... For the first time ever, their spirit has been captured both in words and in a pictorial history in the all-new Spirit of Israel Bible. This King James Bible is the whole Word of God, but also includes over 200 pages of facts, pictures, and stories of the Jewish people's spirit. Relive the triumphs and examine the struggles that created the spirit of this now strong nation. It's all here and available for the first time to you. Operators are standing by. Call now. 1-866-965-7226 Use any major credit or debit card when calling. This Christmas, discover what happens when two friends go back in time to try and find the lost Christmas story. Join Pastor Bob Rogers for this three-week illustrated sermon Sundays at 9 and 11 a.m. at the 6900 Belltown Road location. Make plans this Christmas Eve to join Pastor Bob and Margaret Rogers for Beyond Bethlehem Star, a Christmas Eve service featuring a living nativity, original music, and more. Plus, go with us live via satellite to Bethlehem for the Christmas Day celebrations happening there. It starts Christmas Eve night at 6 p.m. at the 6900 Biltown Road location. And for more information, visit worldprayercenter.org.